What's up guys, my name is Michael Lynn and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we're gonna go over move zeros. So pretty much I haven't really I haven't really been keeping up with the Leak Code 30 day challenge. I was really just honestly just like just scrolling along and just like not really caring about it. So I'm gonna try to like keep up with it now. So I have to make another video about the 30 day challenge because like I was two 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 vids behind, two problems behind, so yeah. Here's another video. Move zeros. So you're given an array nums and you have to write a function to move all zero to the end while maintaining the relative order of the non-zero elements. So we have 0, 1, 0, 3, 12. And then the 1, 3, and 12 got moved to the beginning and the rest are zeros. So I, I already solved this problem, but I'm going to explain my brute force solution and pretty much explain how, it, how it, I came up with it. So I first noticed is that the uh, all the functions, all the values that are not zero are moved into the beginning, and the ones are that are zero are all moved to the end, and we have to maintain the same order. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to loop from uh, I'm going to loop from uh, the beginning to the end. Whoops. Uh, loop from the beginning to the end. Then I'm gonna find my first zero. So if I find my first zero, find a zero. So I'm gonna first loop through the beginning to the end. If I find my first zero, I'm going to from there loop from that point to the end and find the first one. Uh, f yeah, first non-zero. Okay, so I'm gonna so once I find a zero, I'm gonna loop from then on to later on and find the first non-zero and then swap it. So what's that going to do? Is that going to put that's going to put all the all the uh, non-zeros in the beginning and the zeros in the end? Okay. So because like I, at the end of the loop, all the zeros are going to be in the end. So first, I'm going to find my first zero. Then I'm going to loop from that position onward and find the next non-zero, and then I'm going to swap them together. So from here, I'm going to find from this position onward is going to be i plus one, j less than nums dot size j plus plus I'm going to so from this position onward I'm going to check if my position I'm currently at has no zero then I'm going to swap it swap the two values okay and then after that I'm just going to break because then I'm done I already found it and then it goes on to the next zero all right, so to do this, I um, need to create a function called swap. So I'm going to do do this void swap, and it's going to pass in two, two values. And it's, I'm just going to swap those two values, all right? So here, I, I'm also going to pass in the vector. So then it actually changes the array. So yeah, I'm going to create a, this variable called temp is going to equal to my first value, and then my first value, I'm going to set it equal to the next value, and then I'm going to set the next value is equal to temp. Yeah, so that swaps the two. This is this code is going to swap the two values from the first index to the second one, right? So it's going to swap these two values. Okay. Um, so yeah, then after that, it should be. That's it. That's all you have to do. And submit the code. Compile error, what's a compile error? Swap, oh yeah, so I need to pass in a vector. My nums, my nums vector. Taking a while, oh, and it got accepted. So let's look at the details. There's, my, there's actually a better way to do it, but this is pretty much most straightforward ways to brute force it. Huh, well, let's see, what was my runtime? 72 milliseconds, memory uses. I don't get it. I don't know what this means. Okay, um, so worst case scenario, let's explain the worst case scenario. Uh, the worst case scenario is all the zeros are gonna be in the beginning, and then it's, it'll be n squared, because I have to go through the first for loop, and then swap it. Yeah, it'll, it'll literally go to the first for loop, then it goes to the second for loop and I have to swap all the values over and over again. So worst case scenario is when all the all the values are all the zeros are in the beginning 
and then all the uh, non-zeros are in the n, and that will be n squared. Um, best case scenario is that that all the values are um, that I get into this for loop, I find a zero, right? I get in this for loop, and I just swap it once. So the the um, the non-zero is right beside the first zero, right? That's the best case scenario. And then it'll just literally take O of n, because then I go into this for loop, and I just find the non-zero, which is right next to it, and I swap it. So that's the best case scenario. Worst case scenario is O of n squared. So now let's think about a better optimal solution, which is to do this with one for loop, and I'm gonna erase this, and then I'm going to show you guys how to do that. So we first know that based on our first vector, right, our, our array, that all the zero, uh, so we want to move all the zeros to the n while maintaining the order of the non-zero elements. So what we could do is we could maintain an index starting from the beginning, and that, that beginning index is just going to store uh, all the non-zero uh, non values in the beginning and then I'm going to update the index. So then I'm going to put like 1 to at index 0, then I put 3 at index 2, and I put 12 at index 2. Okay, so that will put all the non-zeros in the beginning. Then we could just set all the ones at the end from that index onward to the to be 0. So I'm going to do write that code here also. So I'm going to first start with the beginning index. I'll just have that be beginning. So first I'm going to do is uh, if nums at i is not zero, then I'm just going to set nums at begin is going to equal to nums at i. So that's going to set the whatever index at the beginning to be that the non-zero value, right? Because I'm going to find a non-zero value and I'm going to set it into as the beginning. Then after that, I'm going to do beginning plus plus. And what that does is that it's going to update the beginning index. So then the next non-zero value, I'm going to place it at index 1, right? So this next index value, next value that's non-zero, 3 is going to be put at index 1. And then 12 is going to be put at index 2. So yeah. Whoops. So that's what this code is going to do. Then after this point on, I'm going to loop from uh, int j is going to equal to Oh, wait, no, uh, I shouldn't do this. While begin, while begin is now uh, less than nums.size, I'm going to set all the values at begin is now going to equal to zero. So nums at begin is now going to equal zero, and then begin plus plus. So what this does is it's going to set the rest of the values to be zero after. I put all the non-zeros in the beginning. All right. So after I put all the non-zeros in the beginning, I'm gonna from my index that I'm gonna that I stopped at. So after one, three, and twelve gets put into the beginning, so then I have zero, one, and two. I'm going to start from two, uh, zero, one, and two. Right. I'm gonna start from two, two plus one actually. So yeah. So okay. So after all of my non-zeros put in the beginning, I I have the index zero, one, two. That's where I stopped at. I stopped at index two, and I'm gonna set the rest of them from here on forward to be zero. So I actually should do a begin plus plus here, just to make sure that it's like the one after it. But yeah, that's what this code will do. Uh, let's submit, let's see if this works. I think it does. I'm not sure though, not 100% sure. Wrong answer, what did we do? One, three, two. Oh wait, oh okay, then wait. Oh, I didn't set this one to be. Oh, okay. Um, we don't even have to do begin plus plus. Hold up. Yeah, and I got accepted. Okay, so we don't actually have to do begin plus plus over here. The reason why I thought I had to update the, the begin index again, but we don't have to. From here on forward, I'm gonna set everything else afterwards to be zero from after begin to the after forward. So from the at this point, after all the non-zeros get put in the beginning, my index is gonna be this point at this point zero one two three at this point right and then I'm going to set them from here on forward to the end I set them all to zero and yeah this is going to have let's see worst case scenario is, is that all the well okay yeah worst case scenario is that pretty much you have all of them are zeros in the beginning and then I have to set 
uh, yeah, I just, wait, no, I, all the non-zeros are going to be at the end, and then I set the ones in the beginning, and then this for loop goes, uh, goes completely forward, and here, then it's another O of N square, uh, O of N solution, so it's O of N plus O of N, and that's O of N. So yeah, I think this is the best optimal solution, O of N position without, yeah, while maintaining the order. Okay, yeah, yeah, that, that's pretty much how you do this problem. You put all the put all the non-zeros in the beginning, and then from then on that point forward, you maintain the index where all the non-zeros in the beginning had stopped, and then from that point forward, you're gonna set them all to have value zero. So that's what this loop does. Okay, so that's how you do this problem. Rate, comment, subscribe. I'll check you guys later. Peace.